Hi, let's build a low poly terrain together. The low poly terrain will look somewhat like this background picture and we're gonna do it in Blender and then we'll use it in Unity. So let's open up Blender. This is the low poly terrain I just had in that screenshot that I had built. There's some extra details in there, but let's mainly go over how to do these rocks and stuff like that, okay? So let me go ahead and open up a new Blender thing. And we start off with Blender always with that little cube, right? And um, I'm going to, let's see, the cube. I can get rid of the cube. I could delete it. And I'm going to add a grid. So here's mesh and here's grid. And, and the grid gets added in. Let's zoom in here and let's look at it with the wireframe. You can see it has like sections to it. Before I clicked anything else, I still had this little add grid pop up here and I could say how many subdivisions. See, so now it's like 10 by 10. The size is two. I'm gonna just increase the size to 100. Bam, and now you can see the 10 by 10s are bigger. So with it being 100, I want more detail. So the more subdivisions I put, the more detail I'll have. So let me try seeing 100. Ooh, by 100. There, that's a very detailed grid. So the more detail, the higher subdivisions, the more detail I'll have. So I've made my grid, right? I think the camera and the light, I just, I'm gonna get rid of them, delete. So I have this nice grid here. Now I'm gonna go selecting the grid and go to edit mode over here. And I am in the vertex picking mode. Let's go back to this here. I'm in the vertex picking mode. And what I'll do is I'll pick some vertices. And if I want like that canyon look, I could use the select circle, all right? And I'll just select some things like this. And, you know, I could hold down the shift and I could have that canyon look like I had in the um, picture. I'm using select circle. And then after that, I can move those points upward. I could just press the G key or I could use the um, this tool right here for the move and I could pull them upward. And this is like, they're just coming straight up, right? Now I'm gonna press Control Z. Also, I could use this proportional editing tool. I could click it on and then there's different um, influences here, like different curves that it could influence on. And I got it on this gentle curve and then I could pick it up. And when I do this gentle, this tool, hold on a second, this tool here, um, there's supposed to be uh, the size of the thing. You see, as the bigger I make the, the influencing size, the more it picks up the stuff around it, okay? So it's not just that. And that's the smooth. You can pick the sharp one. So it has a different kind of effect like that. And you can pick different things here. I could pick the, there's one called random and this is the one I had used because it kind of makes like these uh, jaggedy edges as it goes up. So I could pick stuff with the uh, circle select or I could like actually pick specific little um, points. Okay. So let's say I pick some specific little points here and there. And then from those specific little points, I can still have this proportional editing tool on and then go up again. So this time I don't want this um, proportional editing tool, so I'm going to unclick it. And then I could have those little jaggedy edges. Or let's see, let me do sharp. Or let me do constant. It's like I got some plateaus on my plateaus. And let's pick it up higher. So it's like I got a plateau and then there's another plateau. As you can see, I could like shrink the influence of it. You see that? All right, so I got like two plateau levels or I could just pick points like this and then pick them up. Anyway, that's how I do it. I have this grid and see now I kind of have like a terrain thing. Um, if I wanted to have a hill instead of like these like canyon rocks, then let me just go to pick a couple of points here just randomly, right? I'll use the proportional editing. I'll pull it up and 
let's see, I'll just really stretch it out here. And it's kind of like, you know, kind of like hilly. All right, there. So anyway, I can do those things. I can make the terrain. But now let's do some coloring in of the terrain. So I'm going to go to UV editing. I'll go to face select mode. And let's go to the material view. And here, go to the material properties and say new material. And here for the base color, I'm going to pick an image texture for the base color. And then on, I'll open up um, an image that I have on my computer. Let's see. I'll just pick this image here. It's actually showing the image like it's just mapped out. And then over here, the image didn't load. So let's, let's open up the image on this side too, where it shows the mapping. So where did I find it? Right there. Okay. So now I'm going to try to color things in. So let's do it by all by color. Um, so here, let's press A. And I'm selecting all the faces over here. And then uh, over here, it's showing the, the mapping of the coordinates here to the picture. So let me click over here and press A. I select everything. And I'm just going to zoom this down, shrink it down, all the UV mapping so they could fit in one of these color boxes here that I have of this palette. And now I could just move that, all those UV mappings and say that, okay, basically everything is a brown, right? See? Or maybe I don't like that brown, so I can move it to a darker color and see how that looks. So say everything is basically brown. Should I really do that or should I make it green? I think I should make it green so that the the ground is green. So let's start off and say everything is green. That's better. Now I'm going to start trying to get the rocks to be a different color. So I'm going to look at the terrain like with a slanted view like this. And what I'll do is I will just select by height here certain levels of the faces. As a matter of fact, I'll just select all these faces over here that are like higher up. Okay. And I better make sure that I use this um, toggle x-ray. Otherwise, you see, I didn't select all the way through. So I'll use toggle x-ray and I'll do it again. Okay, I got all those faces. And now for those faces, that's where I'll turn the rocks to the brown. And now you can see that I have like things selected like that. Okay. And then maybe I want those extra higher rocks to even be a different color. So I go back to here, make sure I do x-ray. And I'll select these. And for these faces, then I'll make it uh, another color brown, maybe the darker one here. And now I have like different shades based on the height. Turn off the x-ray. And I kind of made a low poly terrain. It's basically like that. And I could continue to do more stuff if I wanted to, but there, it made a low poly terrain. So let's go back to the model view. And over here, we could see the colors if we just use the material view here. And let me turn it to object mode. So this is gonna, this is gonna be how it's gonna look without any of the, um, the line showing like an edit view, you know. Now, if I want to use this and take it out and bring it into Unity, all I'll have to do is um, select it, then say File, Export, FBX. That's a good format to bring into Unity. And then I'll just save a copy of this to my desktop. And I will call it, let's see, it's just the mesh that I need. I'm going to uh, apply transform. There's no animations. So mesh. Check, 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 apply transform, uncheck, and let's give it a name. Let's call it my low poly terrain. And then I'll just say export this FBX to my desktop. And here you can see it's here on my desktop, this FBX. And now I can go into Unity and try it out. So let's open up Unity. Unity Hub first here. Okay, and then I can just say new project. And just give it a name. My project's name will be Low Poly Terrain. It's a 3D project. It's the location. Say create. Okay, so here we have the Unity project. It just opened up. And I did have that file right here, the FBX that I exported. I'll just drag and drop it into my Unity assets, okay? And 
it is going to require the texture so that I could do the colors. So let me also grab that. Um, that texture I also placed on my desktop here. So I'm gonna grab that and dra drag that in. All right. And when I drag that in, yep. Since it's right there in the same folder with the terrain, it should find itself. Now, the thing I'm going to do too, even though it has that, I wanted to use a material from Unity. So what I'll do is I'll take this texture and make a material in Unity. And I'll just easily do that by just putting a 3D object here and dragging and dropping that on there, which automatically makes a material. See? Now I could click on the, um, the model. And here on the Materials button, when I select the model in the Inspector window on the Materials, I could say to use that material and then say apply. All right. Now I could drag the actual, well, before I drag that in, let me just get rid of this cube that I just had temporarily in there. Right click, delete. Now I could drag in my terrain that I made, the slow poly terrain, and I could use it in a game. Almost. I just want to do one more thing to it. I want to put um, a collider on it. So with my low poly terrain selected, I will just add component and I'll go to physics and I'll add a mesh collider. All right. And it's going to be a mesh collider. So it could just, the collision detections could be just the shape of the mesh. All right. And with the mesh collider, there's convex, but that's like gift wrapping the whole thing. I don't want that. I just want mesh collider and have the convex unchecked. So now there's, there should be collisions that can be detected. And just to make sure about that, let's just add a ball, a 3D object, a sphere. Okay, we'll have a sphere here. And let me see, let me just have the sphere be like over here, over these rocks. And to the sphere, let me add a rigid body. So we can have collision detection. And let's see, let's make sure the camera is facing this. Control shift F. So keep your eyes on the ball. I'm gonna press play and we should see the ball drop but it will, oops, it dropped on the other side. <laughs> Let me move the ball over to, the, to this side a little bit more. And press play. And okay, it dropped in, it landed right on the mesh. <laughs> Let me just, I want it to roll off and hit all the stuff. Just to show you, we made this low poly terrain and then here, oops, it just fell into a crack somewhere. I could also put some physics on that ball for the, I could add some physics properties about to make it more bouncy. So let's see, where is that? I'm going to create a physics material and I will have the bounciness set to the maximum one. Okay. And then on the sphere, I could go to the um, collider for the sphere and then use that material that I made and hopefully it'll be bouncy. So you can see it bounce on the train. Let's see. Oh, it still falls into that pocket though. Let me let me just reposition it just a little bit more over this way. Press play. I mean, but basically we did the low poly training and now I'm just getting I'm just playing around with trying to get a ball to be moving around on the floor. Make your game.